What is up guys? This is Dreadtag Gaming. Today I'll be starting my series of episodes, Screw the Meta. And in this particular episode, I'll be focusing on the existing meta for Burst Fire gameplay, Gunlands, the Royal Burst. Royal Burst is said to be the best when it comes to Burst Fire gameplay. Since it is the only Gunlands to have a level 4 normal shelling, it basically leaves everybody no choice but to use this weapon when they want a burst fire build. In my opinion, the best for a burst fire Gunlance is the Gluton Gunlance 3. Yes, the Jagras Gunlance, it is ugly as hell, but let me quickly show you why the hell I'm swearing by this weapon. It only has a normal level 3 shelling, but I'll show you in this video why I prefer this over the Royal Burst meta. Let's go! Okay, so the Gluten Gunlance is a rarity 6 weapon. It has 437 base attack. It cannot get into white sharpness, neutral affinity, a hidden element of sleep, level 3 slot, level 2 slot, normal type shelling, level 3 and can be augmented 3 times at the cost of only 1 warrior streamstone per augment. On the other hand, the Royal Burst it is a rarity 7 weapon. It has the same base attack of 437 but can go into white sharpness, 15% affinity, an active poison element of 330, 1 level 1 slot, normal type shelling level 4, and can only be augmented twice at the cost of two warrior stream stones per augment. So let's get to the comparison. So Gluten Gunlance has two jewel slots and mind you, one is level three and the other is level two. That is a very big factor in customization with your build. You can slap in either an elementless jewel, protective polish, mind's eye, or whatever the hell jewel fits there for your playstyle. Also, it has three augments where you, and you could, again, customize what you want to put in there. Also, since it is a rarity 6 weapon, it only costs one warrior streamstone each. And given that this is a great ja Jagras weapon, it's pretty easy to get early game and it will get you across the end game as well. Now, yes, it is just a level 3 normal shelling type, which makes a huge difference between the level 4 shelling of the Royal Burst. But keep in mind that there is no singular move that can spam just the Burst Fire move. In order to use the Burst Fire move, you were required to perform a specific rotation to access the Burst Fire move. And that is where the Glutton Gunlance comes in. Having high raw damage with an elementless jewel gives you a high damage for your normal attacks that will eventually compensate for the loss of DPS during your burst fire move totally when wielding a higher output than that of a royal burst's combo. Although for a wyvern stake, wyvern's fire, the royal burst would come out on top by a fair bit. The frequency of your usage of these moves however are not as frequent as your burst fire combo since you'd be spamming those with endless loops of combos and essentially just weaving a stake or a wyvern fire when the monster is either about to reposition, uh, when the monster is down or not mobile or asleep. Also keep in mind that since they have same base attack value despite of handicraft, gluten gunlands can be augmented thrice if you have an attack augment like twice and then a health up augment that would offer a complete different gameplay and output compared to only having two augments now let me show you an actual damage comparison uh, so uh, both weapons have been tested uh, with the same build the only difference is uh, the royal burst doesn't have any augments since I haven't got any stream cells for those since it's pretty expensive. And uh, the Gluten Gun Dance has two attack augments and one health up augment. Uh, but since they have the same base attack, they would still probably yield the same results as this uh, just without having the extra health up from augment from the Jackers. So here you go.
Okay, so after those uh, damage testing, now I would like to show you my build for this Jagras Gunlands, and to give you a better understanding of why I like the f the fact that you have lots of options in customizing your build with this weapon. So uh, here, if you would just go on the equipment, there you go. So I have uh, Gluten Gunlands three, obviously. It has 460 attack, uh, decent blue sharpness, 0% affinity, a hidden element of sleep, 2 slots, level 3 and 2, shelling type is normal, level 3, shelling level, and it is augmented into attack increase twice, and health region once. So that would yield into 587 attack because of the elementless jewel. So. I have a Valhazak Helm B that gives me peak performance and Crisis Jewel is slotted into that. I have a Basil Mail Beta that gives me two points in guard and two recovery jewels in there. I have Valhazak Bam oh sorry, Valhazak Brazes Beta that gives me a peak performance uh, skill and three protection jewels for divine blessing and I have a Valhazak coil beta that gives me my final point for peak performance and two medis uh, one medicine jewel uh, slot and recovery jewel one and they have the Yurgon Graves alpha that gives me two points in guard and one point in medicine jewel one have the artillery charm obviously since this is a uh, burst fire build rock steady manual get free dps affinity booster for extra crits and that's it all in all this yields uh guard up sorry guard level four uh that gives me greatly decreases the impact of attacks and reduces stamina depletion by 30 percent Okay, so when you're blocking those attacks, uh, like when the Nergigande dives, he attacks you thrice, or twice. Uh, whenever he attacks you while you're doing your guard, you lose stamina. And if you lose that stamina up to zero, you will lose your shield and you will take damage significantly. So that's important. Uh, recovery up 30%, that gives me lots of regen combined with my health up augmentation of my weapon and combined with the uh Valhazak vitality it recovers the the it allows you to recover exceeded uh health gauge from the red portion and then for my dps that's uh, peak performance i get 20 attack whenever i'm at full health which is pretty frequent uh, artillery basically that's strengthens explosive attacks like gunlance shell swivering fire char uh, charge blade and sticky ammo that gives me a very big cooldown reduction on my reverence fire by 50 percent uh it making me use it more frequent and uh it increased the attack power of each shells so uh i got divine blessing three that gives me survivability uh 50 reduced damage and it procs all the time uh recovery speed that gives me uh level two triples the speed of which you heal recoverable damage stacks with balhazak vitality uh resuscitate that improves evasion and reduces stamina depletion when afflicted with abnormal status effects Capacity boost to boost the shell of my uh, gun lance and non-elemental boost to boost the power of my weapon since it doesn't have an element in it. So that's basically the build. It gives me tons of customization. I would probably put in a recovery speed jewel. Let me just show you my decorations real quick. There you go. So it's just that I lack... A recovery jewel or an iron wall jewel to make my guard level 5 or either uh, make my recovery speed 3 uh, once I get one I'd probably slap it in there uh, I could also uh, put different kinds of jewels in here so 
For example, I'm going to be fighting Balazak. I'd probably replace protection with Miasma Jewel, three Miasma Jewels for the Effluvial buildup, and I'd probably slap in Thunder Resist when I'm fighting Kirin, uh, Fire Resist when fighting uh, Theostra, and so on. So this build is pretty, uh, pretty good. I, I think <laughs> uh, I like the style that I I particularly I uh, I deal damage while I'm not dying <laughs> basically so it gives me pretty de decent damage with this weapon since it has a high raw and yeah uh, that's it so you could actually do a full glass cannon build with this uh, let me just show you this would be my glass cannon build with this uh, but I have I used my turtle power build as I name it uh, very often for solo play for surviving uh, it makes me farm those uh, temperate elder dragons solo easy Okay, so let me show you a clip on uh, how I how I use this build. Uh, it's not the best f clip, but I hope you get the idea that I get tons of survivability. And yeah, so I hope you enjoy the uh, the clip here.
So that is it for the first episode of Screw the Meta. I hope you all enjoyed the video and it would help me a lot if you would leave a like and comment below. Let me know why this is a viable weapon and build or if it's not. Subscribe and click the bell beside it for more Monster Hunter World videos. This is Dreadtack Gaming wishing you all a happy hunt. Peace.